Hey YouTube, this is Eddie's Tech Talk, and today it's going to be a little bit of a two-fold, a two-part review, and you know, it's going to be interesting coming up with the title for this one, so we'll see what I decide on, but this is kind of a re-review and sort of a, another long-term look at the iPhone SE from 2020, so we're going to get into that. How is this phone held up over all this time? Uh, as someone who recently switched back to this phone when my Galaxy Z Flip 3 was in for warranty, and I've actually since sold sold that phone on eBay, so for the first time in a long time, I've only got one phone right now, and it's this one, the 2020 iPhone SE. So it's going to be a little bit of a re-review of this phone that I've uh, been using now for, for quite a while yet again, uh, but this is also, in a way, a look at how something like the new 2022 iPhone SE holds up in the modern space with modern phones, more modern competition than back in 2020, because look, if I told you this was the new 2022 iPhone SE, this was my review or my first look at that phone, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The, the color, the midnight color might be slightly different. I think the product red color uh, here might be a slightly different shade of red, possibly, but it's the exact same phone exterior and by exact I mean exact the dimensions are the same the camera hardware as far as I can tell is the same um, the processor of course is different and the, uh, maybe the amount of RAM on the inside is different but uh, when we're looking at something like the front uh, the front display uh, here when we're looking at that uh, we're getting something that's exactly the same. So in the 2022 iPhone SE, the display, the, the everything is exactly the same on the exterior. The only thing is that's different on the interior is, so the only thing that's really changed is this is the fastest processor that you can get in a phone in the new version. Uh, the amount of RAM might have changed on the inside too. Apple's usually kind of secretive about that kind of stuff, but uh, that's about it. And quite frankly, when we're looking at the 2020 iPhone SE, even all this time later, something that I am just absolutely blown away by is the speed of this device. Now, my sister also has this phone, and she's been using it every single day. It's her daily phone, uses it all the time, uh, and she's been using it all the time as well. I think she's got the 64 gigabyte version. This here's the 128. And she did say just lately, uh, her phone has been experiencing a couple of issues that she says it's kind of, I don't know, she kind of used spazzing as the as the as the adjective there um, but she said she's basically out of storage on her phone so that's a known issue or I guess a known quirk that happened so I'm gonna chalk it up to that and I myself since returning to this have been extremely extremely impressed with the speed of this phone which is why something like this new iPhone SE really doesn't do it for me because look if I'm coming in here I'm going through you know if I go into my settings uh, and I'm, I'm scrolling through I'm living my life whether it's uh, let's take a look at uh, something like, I don't know, let's look at my storage, what we're using up in storage. You know, I've used 48.6 gigs of 128 gigs. Um, I don't know why it's taking a little bit to load here, um, certainly not due to the speed of the device, but if we're going, whether it's uh, storage that's held up, the speed has held up, and, and what I was kind of getting at was my complaints about the iPhone SE and the reason why I am kind of in a way dying to get out of this phone has nothing to do with the speed. I am so impressed with the speed of this device all this time later uh, and I'm so impressed with just the multitasking, the the ability to kind of get into the Apple, get into the iPhone ecosystem at this price point. Uh, this was $399, the new one I think is $429 at the cheapest version uh, and the fact that it's held up for so long, so many years later. I've never had a phone that's done this, especially in this price point. It's still getting the latest software updates. It still has all the latest supported features. I mean, this device, and, and this is more of a vlog video, you know, I'm not doing a ton here, but this device is fantastic from that standpoint. Let's, uh, let's get a YouTube video up. I, I guess I'll pull up a video from my other channel, Eddie's Card Talk. Um, you know, but if I'm going to navigate through here, you know, we can scroll, we can get through things, uh, we can play this here. Two speaker system. Actually, this might be one. No, this is two speaker. Two speaker system, the earpiece, and then one in the bottom here. You know, we can rotate. Video playback is good. Speakers are good. Everything here is really good. Um, 
you know, qu quite frankly, there's nothing to, else to say. This phone is so fast and so speedy, even all this time later. Uh, it's like nothing I've ever seen. So that's something that's awesome about this iPhone. Also, the color, fantastic. I love it. But that's kind of where I really love the iPhone, this iPhone SE anyway. And where I wanted things to improve with the new one was this look is terrible. I mean, I love the form factor. I love the compact phone. I, I really do. Uh, it's great to use in one hand. Typing experience for iPhones is pretty good. I still think typing experience is better on Android, but things are pretty dang good here from from basically every standpoint. But look, this is what you have to look at every day is these huge bezels, which some people don't care. If you are coming from an iPhone 8, and iPhone 7 earlier, oh gosh, I hope not, but if you are, this phone will be an upgrade in almost every measurable way. But uh, to look at this, for this to be my primary device in 2022, and then if you're gonna buy the new iPhone SE, to look at this screen, this form factor every day for the next who knows how long, Ugh, at least for me, that's a bridge too far. The screen is barely above 720p, and I do think it's a fantastic display for what it is. Uh, it's it's probably like the best 720p LCD that's out there, but it's still a 720p LCD. Uh, it does not get bright enough in direct sunlight. It looks pretty bright inside. It might look pretty bright on camera, but for, for instance, uh, some other phones cranked up to max brightness with this recording setup that I have, it'll like almost look blown out in the camera. Uh, and obviously I'm in an interior environment. So when you're out in the sun or something like that, this display does not get bright enough. The resolution isn't high enough. Uh, you know, it is a compact phone, but it's also a really small screen for the size. My girlfriend has the iPhone 13 mini. Uh, that phone's basically the same exact size as this one. It might actually be a little bit shorter than this one. Um, and the screen is just so much bigger because it's able to fill that space. Now, I'm not, I don't know that it's a totally fair comparison to compare something like this or the new iPhone SE to the latest Apple iPhones, but, uh, you know, it would have been nice, and I get that they've already amortized the production of the, of the lines that make this body of phone. I understand, you know, from a business perspective how this works, but... In 2020, I think you were barely getting by with a device like this in this form factor. In 2022, oh man, that's tough. You know, it's got 5G, it's got the newest processor, the fastest chip in any smartphone for 430 bucks. I mean, that's the selling point and you go, wow, like that is fantastic. Well, who wouldn't buy this? But when you're looking at this old, tired display that doesn't get bright enough in sunlight, that just isn't, it just doesn't cut it and you know, it, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of what I have to say about the iPhone SE. Two years later, this device, the 2021 is fantastic. It was a fantastic buy at the time, but it's time to move on now, and Apple didn't really do that with the new iPhone SE, and I get why, you know, some people love, love, love the home button. Uh, you know, they're really targeting with this new iPhone SE, not people like me with this iPhone SE, but people with older iPhones, 8s, 7s, those kinds of people. And if they're used to the home button, if they're already used to the screen, if they don't know what they're missing, then that is a good buy for them, and it is good. But uh, for most of us, for the rest of us, I guess, for people who probably watch tech reviews on YouTube, this is a fantastic device, fantastic entry into the Apple ecosystem in so many ways. And in other ways, it just falls flat. The, the screen is just so, ugh. And, you know, to put this in context right now, I just switched over from Xfinity Mobile to Verizon uh, because my work will pay my, my bill uh, with them, so I figured might as well move to the, you know, a major carrier in that way. Uh, and I was going to probably move to the Apple Upgrade program because I buy a new phone every year anyway. So if I move to the Apple Upgrade program in certain, depending on which model I get, I'd actually save money year to year uh, by doing that. And Verizon said, hey, if you bring your own device to us, we'll give you 500 bucks if you keep your phone active for 45 days. Of course, it's to Verizon. You can only use it on Verizon things, so I don't even know how useful that is to me because I don't need a new phone to add a plan to because I don't want to go with Verizon directly. And if my work's paying my phone bill, me paying my phone bill with the 500 bucks, isn't that useful? I mean, I'm not going to say it's not useful. I'll probably make some use out of it but it's not as good as $500 cash to me or 500 bucks I can use anywhere because my work is paying for my phone bill. Uh, so if I pay it with the Verizon gift card I get, 
work won't pay it, I don't think. So, you know, you guys get the point. And I'm thinking about kind of like forgoing that because I don't want to use this device anymore. Now, I really do like my time with the iPhone, the ecosystem, the services, everything in here is, is getting better and very good. Um, but this display is just so tired to look at, I think, in this, you know, in this day and age. There's been times when I've been impressed with it. I think the true tone, like shifting with the blue light filter at night is really good. And there are times when you really can't tell the difference between this and a higher res panel. But there's enough times when you really, really can tell the difference. And, you know, with the bezels the way that they are and just the small screen, it's just... It's not a joy to look at, and I think it's okay being a display snob over something like a camera snob. Like, this camera is pretty mediocre. Uh, I'll, I'll display some photos from it on the screen right now. Uh, it's it's okay, but it's not very good in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I guess it's it's okay. It's, it's mediocre, not great, not the worst. Um, and so I'll display some of those photos up, but, you know... The camera, I think it's okay to, to maybe accept a lesser camera if you don't shoot photos all the time. You know, you're not shoot. And some people do, but some people don't. But this display, I think it's okay to accept, to at least expect better and want better and be a bit of a display snob because you do look at this all the time. Every time you use your phone, you're looking at this. Um, and, you know, I just don't think it's up to snuff in this day and age. It's great for kids. It's great for like work fleets, like I said, the longevity of this device and its price point is gonna be unparalleled. So you've got the pros on one side of fastest chip in a phone. Uh, you've got, you know, probably more RAM, I don't know. The, the photos in the new one are probably gonna be a little bit better uh, due to that AI processing, but I don't know if it's gonna be worlds better. I've seen some comparisons and there's a difference, but it's not huge. So anyway. I'm all over the place. This is an Eddie's Tech Talk rambling video. On one side, you've got fastest chip in a phone, guaranteed updates for a really long time. You know, you've got that longevity. You're just talking about spending even on a mid-tier storage with 5G for the new one under 500 bucks. And so that's a powerful value proposition. But on the other hand, you've got tired old design, really poor battery life. The battery life on this phone it's probably a toss up between this and the Z Flip 3 as which is worse. This phone's probably better than that honestly, but in for most modern phones the battery life is not good with the 2020 and I heard in the 2022 it's not that much better. So uh in this kind of comparison between the two, I don't know. I was really gung ho about the new one when it came out. I was really gung ho about this when it came out and this still is a fantastic device. Maybe if you're just looking for a phone to get by by the, by an older, you know, a 2020, but Man, this device is kind of a bear to use for someone who loves tech, who loves phones as much as me. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to those Verizon, that Verizon 45 days before getting a new phone just because, uh, you know, of those experiences, of the subpar camera, of the, of the subpar display, all that kind of stuff. But what do you guys think in this kind of rambly video? Let me know in the comments section down below. Are you going to get a new 2022 iPhone SE? Like I said, there's some really powerful value propositions. Maybe you look at this thing and you can probably see, you know, right when you saw it on video, oh, I would get that phone. I don't care about the bezels. The screen doesn't matter. The screen looks fine to me. Um, you know, I'm near a charger. If that's your kind of person, if you if you like Apple, you're near a charger a lot, you don't mind the screen, maybe you're coming from an older phone, um, you know, you don't want to spend a bunch of money, go for it. But if you l want your phone to, you know, have a higher refresh rate display, you need better performance out of the camera, um, all that, I guess all that kind of stuff, there's not that much there, but if you really need a better display, if you really need a better camera, you really need some of the features of the higher end, uh, iPhones, look elsewhere. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I really wish for the new iPhone SE they would have used the 10R body, you know? I, I probably would have bought one. Uh, but let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one.